Uh, good morning everyone. Yeah, it's uh, 7.30 in the morning. I would say if you want to see uh, world famous landmarks without the crowd, definitely come here early. And as you can see, the square is so much emptier. You're probably not going to have, you know, the entire place by yourself. But you know what? Like I'm very happy with the situation here. Well, it's a brand new day. Let's get started. And moments later, the crowd has arrived. I guess a rainy Sunday morning didn't stop all the crowds from gathering for the views of the Eiffel Tower. Okay, let's move to my favorite spot then. Funny thing is, there were even less people over there. To be more exact, only one. And that was myself. Anyways, it was time for breakfast. Guess where I went? I mean, come on. France is one of the largest markets of McDonald's. If French people don't like it, then you probably won't find it like pretty much everywhere around Paris. Alright folks, give me a couple days to switch from breakfast sandwiches to croissant and coffee only. Okay? Yeah, even the McDonald's are uh, pretty empty in the early morning. Well, it's not even early morning, it's already 8 o'clock. But anyways, I prefer Paris <laughs> when everything is empty much more than when it's crowded everywhere. On Google Maps, I noticed something unusual nearby. I decided to check it out and at the same time also do a quick tour around the 16th district of Paris en route. The 6th arrondissement de Paris is one of the most affluent neighborhoods in Paris and even the entire Europe. Yes, I did spot some crazy sports cars driving by, but it was a quiet neighborhood, especially when overcrowded tourist hotspots like Palais de Chaillou and Arc de Triomphe were just nearby. Yeah, everything is cool, it's just that guy in a Ferrari, it's really annoying. The neighborhood has its own attractions that are probably not going to be on the bucket list of first-time visitors, but will be interesting for those returning travelers who want to try something different. Yeah, so uh, behind me, uh, down there, that's the uh, uh, home of uh, uh, Balzac. So Balzac was a very famous uh, French writer. Funny thing is, if you check the surroundings, so you can already see uh, skyscrapers uh, in the background. But this one was uh, kept here because, oh well, this was the uh, uh, home of a uh, very famous writer. I mean, I was kind of expecting that uh, the house would perfectly blend in with the rest of the historic buildings in Paris, but uh, uh, turns out that the neighborhood around this house was heavily developed. Well, you, you can't say it loses its charm, but it's just, uh, it's just what it is. But hey, this is a neighborhood where I didn't see the usual Parisian tourist crowd, so I shouldn't be complaining. As we were approaching the bank of La Seine, the major river that passes through Paris. We were closer to the unusual site I was planning to check out. Can you spot it? Yeah, I've got no idea what's going on. <laughs> Somehow there's a Statue of Liberty in the background. And of course, if you go this way, you're gonna see that tower over there. Actually, the surrounding high-rises did somewhat resemble the skyline of Manhattan. I know you might have heard this story many, many times, but a lot of immigrants back in the early 20th century claimed that the Statue of Liberty in New York 
was the first thing they saw of America. In contrast, hardly anyone paid any attention, or even being aware of the existence of the Lady Liberty statue in Paris. Well, maybe some rich yacht owners and a few tourist boats cruising down La Seine, or bored commuters who need to take the RER trains from the stations nearby. However, unlike the Statue of Liberty in New York, you can easily access the statue in Paris from the bridge behind it. This is ironic, isn't it? I'm able to see the、uh, Statue of Liberty before I can even、uh, go to the United States、uh, since 2020. The Statue of Liberty in Paris is in a much smaller scale. It's more like a statue in a park rather than a colossal monument. You see, in New York City, behind the statue, it's another one of those hidden spots where you could enjoy the view of the Eiffel Tower without the tourist crowd. Well, if you're watching this video, that means it's not hidden anymore, I guess. Actually, if you're familiar with the backstory of the Statue of Liberty, you would probably appreciate seeing the Lady Liberty in Paris. Oh, by the way,、uh, the Statue of Liberty was actually a gift to the United States from France. Okay, now it's Tokyo's turn to explain why they also have a Statue of Liberty over there. Once crossing the bridge, we also left the 16th district of Paris. You immediately notice that you're in a different neighborhood when you look up. And of course, Paris does not only have uh, those uh, classic, beautiful buildings; it's also home to many of the brutalist style buildings. The plan for that day was to get the Paris Museum Pass and start exploring the world-famous museums this city offers. To get the pass, I'll need to go to the nearest museum to purchase, and that would be the Musée d'Orsay, or the Orsay Museum, as how English guidebooks call it. To reach there, I had to take the RERC train from where I was. Yeah, so right now I'm at the Musée d'Orsay, but the problem is right now there's too many people, and I still haven't got my museum pass yet. So I'll probably go to、uh, Centre Pompidou and、uh, get the pass over there, and then I'll come back later. Uh, with that pass, it should uh, uh, guarantee me、uh, entrance to this museum without joining the uh, pretty uh, long line、uh, over there at the、uh, ticket office. To reach Centre Pompidou, I'll have to take the Paris Metro.、Uh, I certainly hope that the ticket office was as empty as this metro station. Wow! Right now, there's nobody at the subway station. En route. I got off at the Medellin Metro Station, as the website indicated that there's supposed to be a point of sale for the museum pass. The place was closed, so no luck again. But hey, the surrounding area was kind of nice, and did not seem to have the tourist crowd like the ones you see in the previous episode. Back on the metro, I eventually reached Centre Pompidou. This impressive modern art gallery was named after President Georges Pompidou, Charles de Gaulle's successor, who commissioned the construction of this building. I thought no one would be there on a Sunday morning, but from the distance, I could still see a line in front of the entrance. 
We are right now at uh, Centre Pompidou. Uh, as you can see, the line isn't that short here either. But hey, I'm already here, so I'll see uh, if I can somehow get in and then get the museum pass. At least once I get a museum pass, I don't have to line up uh, everywhere else. 20 minutes later. Yeah, never mind. I found out there's a tourist office nearby, so I'm gonna go take a look to see if they sell uh, a museum pass over there. On my way to the tourist office, I once again passed by pleasant streets that had no crowds. I didn't get it. What was the whole point of people crowding up the museums where you had to pay when you could actually enjoy nice parks with good views free of charge? All of a sudden, a building in the distance drew my attention. Well, that building looks familiar. And of course, you know where this place is. The Notre Dame de Paris. So the story about this place is that uh, a couple years ago a fire broke out and destroyed the spire in the back. And uh, this place has been closed ever since. And of course this is the main place where uh, Victor Hugo's novel of the same name took place. You know the main character Casimodo is supposed to be a, a watchman for this cathedral here. But because it's closed, um, unfortunately, it's uh, the view from the exterior only. And uh, yeah, maybe in the future it opens again. I'd like to see what's inside. And uh, of course, the uh, uh, island where this uh, basilica is located, this is the city island. This is actually where uh, the city of Paris started. We'll come back to Ile de la Cité later as some of the attractions there would also be covered by the museum pass. La Notre Dame de Paris would have been one of those attractions too, but I guess I'll come back once it reopens, sometime in the future. Okay, what are we waiting for? Let's go get the museum pass. So I'm right now at uh, Hotel de Ville, so the official tourist uh, office of Paris is actually located on a side wing of this building. I guess there is no better place for the tourist office to be other than Hotel de Ville, the city hall of Paris. This magnificent building was originally built back in the 17th century but burnt down as Paris Commune. The revolutionary government who briefly ruled Paris and some consider to be the first socialist government in human history retreated from the old Hotel de Ville, which they used as the headquarters of their administration. The current building was built in the aftermath of this event and in 1944. Charles de Gaulle announced the liberation of Paris from this building's balcony. And uh, I just checked it out. The museum pass, if you want to buy, it activates tomorrow morning. So that means today, uh, <laughs> if, if I buy the museum pass, I still can't uh, visit anything today. Then, um, because by the end of this trip, I'll spend another uh, four days here. So I think I'll just buy the museum pass then. And then it's also a better deal for four days uh, compared to two days as well. Uh, I guess for today and tomorrow, I'll just be visiting the neighborhoods and places around the city. Even though today kind of, you know, rainy, but uh, I can see the sun right now. So hopefully it'll turn for the better. Later, I found out that the first Sundays of each month, Many museums in Paris will be free for visiting. No wonder there were so many people at Musée d'Orsay and Centre Pompidou earlier on that day. If that's the case, and of course you want to avoid all the crowds, I guess I'll have to change the itinerary of our adventure in Paris. Where are we going next then? Follow me to the next episode.